Hi everyone, I am here with a Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we are going to be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 26, Psalm 36, and Proverbs chapter 21, verses 21 and 22. In 1 Corinthians today, we'll be talking about concerning spiritual gifts and unity and diversity in the body. Okay, this is a good one. Okay, let's begin. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, some, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a spirit of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. Knowledge was not given to me. I'm not a smart one. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gift of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues. Sure must heard people do that. I, I never have. I've never heard people speak in tongues, but he was in a church once and all kinds of people started doing that and it freaked him out and he left. It was when he just started going to church and he was trying to find the right church for him. And I think it was some of his family invited you to that one, wasn't it? And he went there and a bunch of people, like, 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 it seemed like the whole church, but a bunch of people were speaking in tongues and he like got scared and left. I've never heard it before in person. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. And these are the work of one and the same spirit and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Now, speaking in tongues is not anything wrong. It's just, you know, it scared Sherm because this is when he was just coming to, you know, trying to find a, a home church for himself. He, he never heard anybody do that before, you know. It, like, took him by surprise. It freaked him out, you know. He wasn't used to that. You know, he didn't know what to think or what to expect. Like, I've never heard anybody do it, so if I was in a church and everybody started doing that, I'd be taken by surprise at first. I'd be shocked at first, but then I, I would know, though, because I know about people speaking in tongues by reading about it and learning about it from the Bible, you know. If you learn about it more and more, then you'd know. It's like... Sherm did, but when you hear it, when you, you know, experience it firsthand, it takes you back, you know, when you first experience it, because it's something you've never heard or seen before. But there's, there's nothing wrong with it, and it, it always, they always say, when someone speaks in tongues, there's always going to be at least one person there that knows what that person's saying. God's going to have that one person there. That's why that person speaking in tongues, there's going to be one person there that knows what that person's in speaking in tongues is saying. That message is meant for them to hear and no one else. 
God knows what he's doing. Now we're going to get into unity and diversity in the body. Just as the body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, well then how would we walk? It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, then how could we hear? It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Just think of your body and your parts, all the different parts of your body, down to your very fingernails and your eyelashes that God has made for your body and the reasons why they're there. God, God made you. Look at the detail. He made you perfect. He knew what he was doing. He knows what he's doing. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable, unpresentable, <laughs> I can't, how come I can't say that word? Unpresentable. I need, I need, I can't say some words now. Sorry. Are treated with special modesty. While our America, not, Lord, Father, now he's going to put it in here again. He's doing that, you're doing that on purpose. While our presentable, parts need no special treatment but God has put the body together I can see him laughing right now he is he's laughing at me <laughs> he's got a sense of humor I don't care what anybody says I can see him laughing at you I know he does he did it on purpose <laughs> he knows he did it <laughs> but God has put the body together giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it <laughs> so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Father, Father, Father. Nobody can tell me our Father does not have a sense of humor. Some people in this world have no sense of humor. None. Those kind of people, I do not know how they live. Our Father cannot be that way, I'm telling you. He has to have a sense of humor, I know. Because I joke with him a lot. I know he has a sense of humor. I know he does. Some of the things we, um, some of the things we laugh about together, he plays tricks with me, I know he does. That's what he's term. Like, um, something will come up missing, and I'll check everywhere. And then it'll just happen to appear right there beside me. Like, ha, ha, ha. I mean, right there. And it was checked really bad, wasn't it? <clears throat> but 
that some people, you'll tell them a really, really super funny joke. That's the reaction you get. Not even a smile. They won't even crack a smile. And you're like, you don't know what to do, you know? Because <laughs> you've never been around somebody like that before. Like, um, okay. So, what was the weather like here yesterday? Sherman was like that when I first got with him. I'd tell him something or tell him something funny and he'd just stare at me like, what are, what's wrong with you? But now after we've been together so long, he started acting like me and laughing and everything. He's got a good sense of humor now. <laughs> but he used to be that way, didn't you? He didn't, he was, he was like that. But after we was together a while, he, he got a good sense of humor. I don't know, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm too funny, I don't know. Maybe I just have an overwhelmingly too high of a sense of humor, I don't know. I think it's good to have a sense of humor. Yeah. I mean, you can't laugh about certain things, but you gotta, you know, you can't take everything too seriously. And I'm not talking about the bad things in life, you know. So let's go ahead now and go to our psalm. So we ended Psalm 35 yesterday. So today we are going to read Psalm 36. Um, let's see, for the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord. And it has 12 verses and we're reading the whole thing. Hiccups, no go, we have hiccups. Let's see, has this one? I don't think this is one where he's crying out to the Lord. I think it's one where he's more like, like um, a prayer to the Lord this time. The last one was like one he was crying out to the Lord. So I think this one's more like a prayer. I have a message from God in my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There is no fear of God before their eyes. In their own eyes they flatter themselves. Too much to detect or hate their sin. The words of their mouth are wicked and deceitful. They fail to act wisely or do good. Even on their beds they plot evil. They commit themselves to a sinful course and do not reject what is wrong. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights, for with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Continue your love to those who know you, your righteousness to the upright in heart. May the foot of the proud not come against me, nor the hand of the wicked <clears throat> drive me away. See how the evildoers lie fallen, throw down, not able to rise. And that was all of Psalm 36. For the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord. And ending today's Bible reading is Proverbs 21, verses 21 and 22. Whoever pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. 
One who is wise can go up against the city of the mighty and pull down the stronghold in which they trust. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading. I hope it touched your hearts. Let's see, let me go through the prayer requests. Please keep the following people in prayer. Please keep Sherman your prayers. I think he's feeling a little better with his back today. I think um, Abby messaged me, but she didn't really say the name of the chiropractor, but I think I found him because she told me exactly pretty much where he was. So um, I think I found him online. So I'm going to call there tomorrow, and I have to schedule a few rides for sure. So i got to get that set up. And the um, bug man's coming tomorrow. Um, the exterminator, we call him the bug man. They um, come to all the apartments here once a month and spray, you know, to keep bugs and stuff away. And they, they're coming tomorrow. They come like the third Friday of every month to spray. Um, let's see. So they'll do all that tomorrow. They always come really early. So I'm going to get up when the alarm goes off, when Sherman gets up, but wait on them. Start making phone calls. And i got to call the dermatologist to get, have her call insurance antibiotic. i got a lot to do tomorrow. A lot of calls to make. I feel like I'm forgetting something. But he's, his back still really hurts, but he's feeling better than he did the other day. So thank you for the prayers, and please keep praying for him. Really pray, pray that the chiropractor helps him a lot. Um, please pray for Cindy Welsh. Please pray for Layla and her son, Mill. Please pray that Mill has a great um, experience with university and he does well. Um, please pray for Layla's health, that it starts to get better. And um, she has good luck with everything in life from here on out. Please pray for Rhonda Karshner. Please pray for Abby Myers and Matthew Simpson. Abby's not feeling very good today. Please pray for her. Um, and please pray that the chiropractor helps her. Please And please pray her and Matthew got their new house. So please pray that they get settled in it soon here and everything goes great for them. Please pray for Jimmy Myers. You know, he got a job and he's loving it. He got a job at a grocery store close to home. Please pray for Dora Carper. Um, my cousin, her daughter, her only child's birthday is tomorrow. And she passed away in her 30s. So she's in heaven. She'll be celebrating another birthday in heaven. And Aunt Dora also lost her husband and her, and her house dog, Nikki. So she's all alone except for the Lord. And um, Cindy, her sister, her sister Cindy, my aunt, and Jim, Cindy's husband, that my uncle that go, goes up there, you know, on the weekends every now and then. And but anyway, Lisa, her daughter Lisa's birthday's tomorrow, so I know she'll be really down. Um, so please pray for her, especially for tomorrow, because I know tomorrow will be a hard day for her. Please pray for Judy Thompson. Still haven't heard anything from Judy. Please pray for Elizabeth Jeffries. Please um, pray for Garnet and Jim Boyer. And please um, keep praying for Andre, the missing man. I have not heard any more about him. I might go to that page tonight and see if anybody's posted anything. But when things like that happen, you know, I don't know. Some, a lot of times they don't even update. But he's um, he's African-American man. Um, very short, if not bald, hair. Um, he's 6'4". He's a big man, 6'4", over 300 pounds. He's from Philadelphia, but was last seen in Ohio, but they don't know where in Ohio. And he was driving a 2011 white BMW. So it would be easy to spot in Ohio, pretty much. If he was in the area we was. Nobody drives that kind of car around here fancy for around here. So um, that is everything on my list there. 
So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye guys. God bless.